Hello everyone, I hope you're well, hope you're doing all right. So today we're going to talk about gold. We're going to talk about uh, what am I going to be doing for gold. As you can see right here, I'm in a trade through to the upside into this area right here. Now, very important thing to notice, you can notice how, well, let me show you this, how symmetrical the patterns are on the six hours and the 30 minutes at the moment, how we're creating the same almost uh, price action that uh, I'm buying. So the price action right here, as you can see, the market created these stops. So people were selling right here as the market was testing that $2,335 area. Continuous selling right there, stop losses above it. The market went into these stop losses, liquidated those stop losses through to the upside. And then we started seeing momentum down from this price right here, $2,365 all the way down. We broke through to the downside right here. We continued going down into what? Into all the liquidity that was created down here because here's what you can notice as well. When we were pushing through to the upside, we created this trend line. For example, we created these bottoms right here we created order blocks as we were pushing through with momentum through to the upside so we created a lot of stop losses right here through to the downside what the market did is it came down into these stop losses right here to this bottom area of 2293.958 right there and then the market started pushing through to the upside with momentum and right now we are creating tops around this area right here, which is suggesting that, okay, after liquidating through to the upside right here, so my blue boxes are my liquidations. So we have a liquidation right here through to the upside that the market went down, liquidated right here through to the downside, and then we started pushing through to the upside. So the latest liquidation that we have is through to the downside right here, then momentum through to the upside, creating tops right here right now, and therefore I see this pushing through to the upside. Now let's go deep into the price action happening inside this area right here, inside these wicks right there. We can do that on the 30 minutes. Notice the uh, symmetry here. When we go down to this price action, we'll notice almost the same shit happening here. So let me delete all the price action that we already drew. What we did right here is we created these tops. So continuous selling above this area. Then we pushed into it we liquidated right here through to the upside as you can see with this maximum price of 2339.664 and then the market started pushing down from there into where into this liquidity through to the downside right here you can see you can see that we created a trend line we created bottoms we created all these order blocks right here pushing through to the upside and then the market came down into these stop losses with that bottom price right here of 2318.620 so you can notice liquidation through to the upside liquidation through to the downside which is the most recent one then we had momentum through to the upside that momentum is now creating tops Right here, notice the symmetry. It's almost the exact price action on the six hours and the 30 minutes. And right now we came back to test and we are pushing through to the upside. I like it when the market forms that exact symmetry between different uh, time frames. That uh, tells me that uh, that basically confirms my bias that gold is going to go in uh, a certain direction or whatever instrument is going to go in a certain direction when we have in such uh, symmetrical price right here now i do believe that gold possibly on a higher time frame basis we can see it push all the way up into these highs right here above these highs now on a 30 minutes basis of course i don't care about that huge push to the upside because that would be too big so simply for me just buying it just to cross that liquidation right here and tap into this 2343 uh, dollars area this is uh, everything that i'm looking for at the moment let's see how that goes look at the beauty of those symmetrical patterns. Both right here, finally, TP hit right here. There's multiple things I wanna talk about today. So first of all, let's talk about my emotional resilience. Let's boost my ego a little bit here. Let me talk you through the emotional roller coaster that any trader has to go through. I took this trade right here and I opened the charts a few hours later. I was at the gym and I saw a lot of green right here. The market is about to hit my TP. I'm feeling like, you know what? This is going to be a fast trade in and out in a few hours and it's going to hit my tp easy money made and then i opened the charts a few hours later as i was back home i did some meetings i showered all that and i saw a lot of red right here halfway through my stop loss then i opened that trade a few hours later let's say up until the next morning right here on tuesday and i saw that it was around be again 
Then I opened it again a few hours later and I saw that it was a lot of red, then some green, then back at BE. Then I opened it today in the morning and I saw that, okay, yesterday night it pushed through in my direction and hit my TP. That emotional roller coaster that traders go through is usually enough for traders, for your brain basically, to say, you know what? I want out of this emotional roller coaster and do something stupid. Either close the trade the next time you see it in profit. So this is what the majority of traders will do. Okay, I see a lot of red. I'm going to wait for it until it gets into some green. And then I'm going to close that trade basically because I'm afraid of what might happen next. Or I see a lot of red again. Then I'm going to wait for it to just pass through BE right here. And then I'm going to close it right there. What's very important for me is... I am not chasing the desire or the feeling of winning a trade. You want to win a trade because that gives you a certain satisfaction. And therefore, this is the feeling that you are chasing. And the exact opposite is happening. When you lose a trade, you feel shame, you feel bad. And therefore, you try to avoid that feeling. And therefore, you close that trade the moment you see some green. For me, the feeling that I am chasing is feeling proud of myself that I stuck to my system throughout all the emotional roller coaster that is happening. This is number one. Okay, this is a very important point because even if I lost right here, right now I won and I'm explaining this trade to you. But even if I lost, even if the market hit my SL right here, then I wouldn't feel sad that I lost. I would feel proud that I stuck to my initial plan right here. And this is the feeling that I'm chasing, which is a feeling that you could feel whether you win or lose. So I always feel the same things. I always feel a positive emotion that I'm proud that I stuck to my plan, that I stuck to my system. This is number one. Number two, I have this uh, type of mindset and I know it might be laughable for some of you guys, but this is the way that I think. I think, and I truly believe it in my heart, that when such price action is offered on the chart, that whoever is controlling the market, the market makers, all that, are trying to push you into an emotional decision, okay, are trying to push you to do something stupid. And therefore, for me, because I have such a big ego, if you didn't notice, then I wouldn't allow myself to be pushed around by anyone. And therefore, when I see such price action that is causing certain emotions, the first thing that I say is I'm not going to allow the markets or whoever's controlling the markets to push me in any direction or to push me to do a stupid decision because I have such a big ego and I'm not going to allow anyone to play with me like that, basically. So I'm just going to stick to my system, stick to my plan because this is what they don't want. They want me to be emotional. They want me to give my money away. They want me to not book the maximum profits that I can book. And therefore, if I think about it this way, like someone is purposefully trying to manipulate me into certain decisions, then I won't do them because I have such a big ego that I won't allow myself to be manipulated by anyone. This is uh, the way that I see the chart and this helps me basically uh, counter my emotional decisions. If I look at the charts, as I told you, I saw a lot of green right here, then I saw a lot of red down below. And immediately in my head, I was like, okay, they're trying to push me into an emotional decisions. I'm not going to do it. Right now, right at this stage, I've been trading for 10 years. I don't really think about it. I don't really like consciously think about it, but it's in my subconscious mind. So my head immediately is like, don't take an emotional decision. This is what they're trying to do. Without, it's like a millisecond decision because I'm so used to it right now. Now, anyway, the second thing that I want to talk about as well is my SL placement. Okay, a lot of people tend to aim for a really big risk to reward ratio and therefore what they try to do is they try to do this. I enter right here and I place my stop loss right here so I can get a 1 to uh, 7 risk to reward ratio. And always with those trades, you're not allowing the market to breathe. You're not allowing the market. The only person, the only entity that benefits from such tight stop losses are the banks. That's it. Because you're making it so easy for them to liquidate you. They don't need to let's say, do a lot of efforts or sell a lot of positions for them to get to your stop loss. All they need to do is push the market just a little bit through to the downside and boom, your stop loss is hit. So the only one benefiting from such tight stop losses are the banks and the market makers and all that that are basically just basically whoever is trying to enter the market and needs liquidity to enter the market, it's easier for them to liquidate uh, your stop loss in that case. Now, one more thing I want to say is that placing my stop loss like that and allowing the market to breathe like that with no problem is the best decision I have ever made. 
okay? So placing your stop loss below the low that is liquidating the previous lows and even notice it's not exactly at it. I didn't do it like that. I could have done it like that and got a one to four risk to reward ratio, but I allow the market to breathe. I just give it some space right here. Do what you need to do. Create liquidity, liquidate it through to the downside, push through to the upside, come back and test. Do what you want to do right here. I'm going to allow you to breathe and then I'm going to benefit from the major movement not from minor fluctuations 